Welcome inside the Bison Media Blog Studios, along with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. First time on a Monday, Jeffrey, we visit in six years of doing this blog. We were talking about a Bison season opening loss. NDSU losing on Saturday at Montana, 38-35. to We'll get to the game in a second. I think I, the biggest talker is what happened after the game in the hoopla of Montana celebrating its fantastic win over the Bison was that a appears a Grizzly fan went and had an encounter with Chase Morlock, Bison running back. You're going to see here on the spot shadow where the Grizzly fan attempts to try and tap Morlock on the helmet. Apparently had Chase by the face mask. Morlock shoves him out of the way. He's not going to be suspended. No punishment coming. Your thoughts on all this? This kind of dominated our, our day yesterday. It's uh, the social media world, yeah. isn't it, Dom? You're going to see a lot of this, I think, in the coming years. And I think this illustrates a good point in that, you know, when you have a, a media entity in your Twitter handle, whether it be the Forum Communications, WDAY, or the Missoulian, or what have you, you have to make sure the facts before you start going out and tweeting. Because we knew about this on Sunday, right? But remember, we're yeah. going, okay, wait, yep. don't tweet anything because no. we don't know exactly no. for sure. What's going we on? We haven't heard no. from the parties. We haven't heard from the schools. Don't be sitting there tweeting what you think you know. Uh, you know, there was some film that I think somebody had out there, some video. It, maybe it was two seconds. It showed Morlock doing that. Well, what that didn't show was the preceding 10 yards a right. guy was on him, or the preceding, you know. At least five to 10 five seconds. seconds. Yeah. Of, of what happened before that. So the young reporters, you gotta yeah. be careful on what yep. you put out there because um, in this social media world, you know, accuracy, you can't take that for granted. Bob Stick called Chris Kleiman this morning and apologized and said they're undergoing a massive security investigation and said it never should have happened. And granted, Fans get on the field, whether that's right or wrong, we can debate that till the cows come home, but I thought it was interesting that both North Dakota State and Montana issued statements. Montana apologized to NDSU yesterday, saying this sullied the end of what was a fantastic football game. Well, I, I don't know if it sullied it so much, but it was certainly a black- It took the attention away from it. Did. It, it, yeah. it, it certainly was a black mark on it. I, I look at it this way, I, the case is over now. Yep. I mean, it's over, but I'm surprised that it doesn't happen more often mm. in college football because yeah. you see those fans out there, alcohol induced, yep. I'm sure, Correct. and and all excited over wins and <laughs> celebrating. And you got players that just finished and they're frustrated and you know they probably just want to get out yeah. on with things. You have those emotions clashing in college athletics all the time. Frankly, again, I'm so, I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. I was really impressed with how fast Montana's athletic administration got the goalpost down. I don't know if you noticed that. They were down lickety split after <laughs> the game. I don't know. Maybe they should have been focused on fans rather than the goalpost. I don't know. We can debate that too. There wasn't that, that many too, fans out there. It wasn't no, like the whole stands no, and, came and on. I, you know what? That's funny because I was looking too. I was looking at the student section when the game got done from my position where I was at. It's like, all right, no one seems to be coming on the field. Yeah. just not noticing uh, what happened there. But as Jeff said, uh, the case is over and, and we move on to today's press conference where the news today doesn't get much better for North Dakota State. Chris Kleiman saying quarterback Carson Wentz has a high ankle sprain, likely not to practice this week, obviously with the Bison with a bye week. And his status for Weber State in about 13 days' time is questionable right now. Immediate reaction to this? Uh, questionable for sure because a high ankle sprain is tough. Sometimes you hear coaches say this and you hear trainers that sometimes a broken bone is almost better than a high ankle sprain if it's really mm -hmm. uh, tweaked wrong. Uh, I, for sure he's taking this week off. He's, he's probably going to be in a boot all week. Uh, that puts the, the, the deal on Easton stick no now. Doubt. It turns the attention to the young freshman and... Uh, we'll see how he handles it. He'll, at least he'll have the benefit of two weeks. He'll have the benefit of two weeks, uh, him and Cole Davis, of taking reps yeah. with the number one offense, and, and I think that can only help. How big a deal is this? And this is something we talked about post-game about Wentz running the football because it was – obviously that was the play where he got twisted up and turned his ankle. He was not the same player. Obviously the Bison stopped running with him, and he couldn't throw. That highlight we showed late on that third down play right before Montana got the ball back with a game-winning touchdown – that throw to the outside on third down had nothing on. He could not lunge with it really at all. Yeah, it is his plant foot. Yeah. And, and when you're 6'6", 235 pounds and, it's huge. and planning to yeah. throw and you can't put all yep. your weight on that, yeah, that puts additional stress on your arms and it certainly takes away from the accuracy because he was not, you're right, remember that pass to 
Shepard in the first half. Mm-hmm. That was just an absolute Dying. bullet. No. He didn't have that in no. the second half. How big a deal is this? He's, and and Kleiman said today, we're not going to prevent Carson Wentz from running the football, but you've also got to look out. This is your guy. Uh, how many hits do you want him to have him take every game? And, I, I and think Carson's well, credit, he's not going to run out of bounds either. you you got to use him in the run game. You have to because he's so effective at it. Yeah. I, I just don't think, you know, they've done this before. Uh, I'll go back to Nick oh. Mertens, where they never ran the guy mm. because he had nobody behind him, right. and they were afraid to run him, and that offense was absolute vanilla. I, I, you got to use that in the offense. It, you know, it's how I mean, he could hurt his ankle going across the street too, or he gets sacked. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's the thing. But I'm curious how practice goes this week. We've talked about Easton Stick for a long time. He may get his first reps who comes to the home opener uh, at Weber State. Something to obviously watch here is the Bison. And I thought this was interesting as well. Kleiman said this is not going to be like a normal bye week. Obviously, it isn't being one game into the season and you're taking a week off, but they're going to have some heavy, intense practices this entire week. I think a lot of that, of course, is due to Montana, courtesy of Montana. Yeah. Because when you go in that environment, you get exposed. Yep. Your weaknesses get exposed. and. Let's just say there's going to be a lot of coaching done this week on the practice field. What did you say? If you're, we watched the tape, it was, was weekend, it was when we were coming back yesterday. What was the most glaring thing to you that stood out and say, that needs to be addressed before they play Weber State? I don't think there was one thing. I, I think you can divide this game up. I think everybody had a hand in it. The first half, I thought the defense really had its problems maintaining the pace of Montana. Yep. The second half, I thought the offense just boggled down and again part of that may be due to the Wentz injury, injury but that doesn't excuse the offensive line from not blowing them out either mm-hmm. I just uh, uh, and special teams you miss a field goal a makeable one yep. at the end of the half that I, I think last year would have been made with Adam Keller and that would have been 10 points right at the end Correct. of the half off two fourth down uh, stops, stops yeah. that they made mm-hmm. against the, the Montana team so uh, I think everybody had the, had had a hand in the loss, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> defensively wise, though, I I thought they got better as the game went along. I really right. believe that. Yes. The one thing that didn't happen, and this is Kleiman pointed out too during today's press conference, they didn't win any 50-50 balls. I know you pointed that out too in our post game show, and that's something that ha- against wide receivers. Now, not everybody in the FCS has wide receivers like the Grizz do, but they've got to be able to make a play, and that's obviously what, like Big E was saying. C.J. Smith's presence was sorely missed. Yes, and also, and Kleiman again pointed this out today. I thought in the press conference, he was almost hinting at it. Did they get out coached? Because he, they constantly put at Montana, they made great adjustments. Yeah. They made great adjustments. I don't know if NDSU made great adjustments. Mm. I, I don't, I'm not an X and O mind like yeah. you are in football. <laughs> I, I, you, I mean, I don't see the adjustments. None yeah. of us really do probably because it's such a technical game. But maybe they got out coached too. He also made the point that there may be another true freshman to get into the mix. That's wide receiver Marquise Bridges. He did make the trip on Saturday. Did not see any action. Obviously, Dimitri Williams did, as Bison fans know, um, and along with Robbie Grimsley, who played quite a bit. And Climate said he did a, a nice job out there at his first collegiate game on Saturday. Uh, perhaps. Again, I, I couldn't tell you. I didn't see him around the ball a whole lot not either. Time. But, yeah. um, you know. That's one of those evaluation things that we'll just take their word for it. That's a tough spot for a true freshman, no, isn't it? No doubt. Weber State is next up on the schedule. The Wildcats have their season opener on Friday night in Corvallis, Oregon, against Oregon State. So they're going up against a, a heavy-hitting Pac-12 team. Jay Hill's team really struggled last year. They didn't win a single game until uh, the middle of November when they beat, ironically, the University of North Dakota uh, in Grand Forks. This is a team that played the Bison tough last year, and I'm curious to see year two of his program, how they come Come back. Remember, they took a ton of transfers last year, including their quarterback. After that first game, I thought it surprised me they didn't win a game. I yeah. thought they were a pretty decent team. Plus, you had the fact you think those transfers would have grown yep. over the year and, and meshed into more of a team. There's a lot of pressure on the head coach. He came as a as a big time recruiting out of Utah. guy mm-hmm. out of Utah. Yeah, so he's got to produce this year more than just one win. Certainly, the first weekend of games. It's funny we're, we've been in you know, coverage mode for about four months here, but it seems, but now everybody else starts playing this weekend and the Valley's got some great games. I think a ton of Bison fans, if they're not watching North Dakota and Wyoming, which I know they will for the obvious storylines in that game, they're gonna be watching Illinois State and Iowa, 11 a.m. on Saturday morning. Marshawn Coprich will play, Trey Roberson back. I think this is an upset. I'm not going to give away my FCS pick them yet, but the Redbirds are a tough team. Oh, the nickel. The battle for the, the nickel The nickel resumes this week. year, okay. yes. It, it, well, I don't think Iowa's going to un- un- underestimate Illinois yeah. State because people have been talking about well, Gene that. Gene Taylor will be telling them all about Illinois State. There's, there's <laughs> certainly that. Gene, and then the AD certainly yeah. will be telling yep. the head coach, too, what Illinois State's all about. Boy, with Coprich and Roberson, they have a chance. Yep. 
Youngstown State, the Bull Pelini era begins in Pittsburgh against the Panthers. Youngstown beat Pitt a few years ago with your guy Kurt Hess at quarterback. How do we make, make of this game here? Pitt's always kind of an interesting team in the ACC, and who knows what to expect with Bo Pelini and Youngstown. Has Pitt really been that great lately? Very average. Very average. Yeah. Very winnable game for Youngstown. Again, I think you have the Bo Pelini, uh, I want to say, momentum boost yeah. or that, you know, that initial get-out-of-the-gate enthusiasm. Ah. I, I think that's going to be a close I'll game. Put, I'll put a star by that one as well. Northern Iowa and Iowa State as well on Saturday night. Obviously, the Panthers went there a couple years ago and won. The Cyclones have not beat an FCS team over the last couple of years. Lost to Northern Iowa, lost to the Bison last year. I, I think NDSU gave Iowa State a lesson last year in <laughs> FCS football. I don't see Iowa. Iowa State's going to be better this, I agree. this year. Yep. They're going to be a better team. I think they take that game. The other game that I know, at least I'm interested in, I'm curious what you think, is Eastern Washington and Oregon on Saturday night with Vernon Adams now quarterbacking against his old team. Oregon, I, ex I expect probably to win rather e easily in this game. I'm curious, though, how Adams plays against his old school. And what does Bo Ball would have in store against the Ducks? How tough is that going to be for the quarterback? Right? The, the, the motions out yeah, there. It's you know, he's got to have some friends, even, right. though he, even though he bailed on them. Yep. And there's got to be some friendships there yeah. that you, you would think would still be a little fresh. I, I, I don't know. I'm just curious to see yeah, how he plays. It's really going to be an interesting game there on Saturday night. So with all the Bison game, there's still plenty uh, to watch this weekend of the FCS. We'll keep you posted. Uh, any injury news with Carson Wentz? We don't expect anything probably to change in his status between now and next week as the Bison go into the first of two bye weeks in September. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog.